those who from the tribe of the Levi, they have a commandment to receive the tithes from people according to the law. That is from their brethren. We say that uh, a priest is ordained from their brothers. So you are lifted from your brethren. Don't forget that in Hebrews 5. So he's raised. And now he's supposed to receive from the brethren. They have come from the loins of Abraham. So they came from the loins of Abraham. I want you to, to get that. They came from the loins of Abraham. Those people came from the loins of Abraham who receives the tithe. Now, but he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who earned the promise. So imagine Abraham is the one carrying the promise. But he was blessed by Melchizedek. And Melchizedek did not come from Abraham. So he gave, he gave the blessings. The one who had the promise. So it doesn't matter how big is your promise. You need to be sub subject to priesthood. That you receive your blessing. You can say that Abraham was so much blessed that he never needed another blessing. But he needed the priest to align himself with the priesthood. That is right. Uh, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. The lesser is blessed by the better. So, uh, when you understand that, the lesser is blessed by the better. So, that means Melchizedek blessed Abraham. What does it mean? Melchizedek was better than Abraham. Melchizedek was better than Abraham. That is why he qualifies to bless. And what Abraham did? Abraham also gave him tithe of all. In other words, he also blessed. So the lesser bless the better through their material things. That is how they bless. So you have no power to tell your pastor, God bless you, and that blessing come. You tell your pastor who is a priest ordained, you tell them, God bless you by giving part of your material things. We don't see, uh, we, we don't see Melchizedek, uh, Abraham telling Melchizedek, I also bless you. What he did, he gave him an offering. He gave him tithes. So, the members of the church and people who are lesser than others, you can go and tell them, I bless you. I bless you. you. You don't have that power to do that. The Bible says, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by what? By the better. So, when you come and you tell them, I bless you to prosper, you are blessing if you are, you are making yourself better. Am I talking to anybody here? You are making yourself better. And it's the better that blesses the lesser. So if I have the authority and I'm being lifted by God among my brothers to be a priest, my brothers cannot be coming to me to tell me, God bless you, God bless you. Uh-uh. Their way to bless me is hearing and following the commandment of God because they have been commanded by God to release their material things. And that is how it works. So you don't go telling your pastor, God bless you, man of God. Uh, do something else. Do something else. Don't go and say, God bless you. God lift you. You have blessed my heart today. Uh, God bless you and lift you and take you to places. You are making yourself a priest. Bigger than a priest. That means you are a high priest. Then I am a priest. So that after saying that, I should tithe to you. That is how people pervert the gospel. Now behold all 
contradiction. Behold all contradiction. The lesser is blessed by the better. So you need to know that and hand it to your knowledge so that you don't go telling the men of God who have been unknown, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. What you do is your blessing is like the way Abraham did to Melchizedek. That's how you are supposed to release. That's why Paul says, we who have sown the spiritual seed, we have the power to reap the material things and from the people. If you have no problem with that, go and complain to God. Now, verse 8 says, here mortal men receive tithes. Mortal men receive what? Tithes. But there is but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. So there is one who receives that is witness who lives. Now, who is this who lives? Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham to speak. So Levi himself paid tithe through Abraham to speak. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. That is the only problem with the priesthood now. Listen to me. You are able to submit to a certain form of priesthood when you are in the loins. Levi was not born by the time Abraham was giving tithe to Melchizedek. But here the one says he gave when he was in the loins. So I want you to understand when your grandfather was moving to the mountain to worship the God of Mount Kenya, you were moving with him. Where were you? In the loins. That's why I said you are born aligned to a certain priesthood. The funny things about the spiritual things or matters, anything that is spiritual and was released into action, if it is not denounced, it keeps on raining. If it has never been denounced. So, if you don't denounce a certain covenant, you don't denounce certain priesthood, you don't denounce certain altars, they will keep on servicing your life. If you don't denounce them, they reign. They have influence. That's the funny thing about the spiritual life. Some people assume, and they live in so much assumption, that things will just work. So if you are aligned with the wrong priesthood, if you don't denounce it, it will keep on working for you. It will keep on disturbing your life. And that is why some people are not stable. Stable in marriage, stable in business, because priesthood are still of the authors of the covenant that you align yourself with, and you never denounce them, they are still having influence. You are still able to receive signals, and you are able to receive influence in your spirit from those forces in the realm of the spirit. So that is how powerful these things are. You can see a person who is not born is giving tithe before he is born. So there are some people who, get, who committed, worshipped idols before they were born. You can see where your father was going or what was happening. All these things happen when in your spirit before you came into manifestation in the, in the flesh. So, you are aligned in a certain way. That's why Levi was aligned in a certain way when he was in the loins of his father, Abraham. When Abraham met Melchizedek. Remember, even at that time, Isaac himself was not born. Isaac was not born. So, there is birth of Isaac. There is then... Jacob, and then 
Jacob is the father of what? Of those who are of the, 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 the those generations. So they, you can see now, the that generation still was giving what? Tithe. When it was in the loins of, uh, of the father. The fourth generation was giving the, 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 the tithe. So you can take yourself back even to those generations and see what kind of priesthood you were born. What kind of things you have gone through. Now look at verse 11. Say, therefore, if perfection were through Levitical priesthood, for under it the people receive the law, that that father need, what father need was there that another priesthood should, ar should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron. So in other words, that priesthood and a problem so, if people would be perfected. So, the purpose of the, uh, the, the priesthood is to bring everything into perfection. That is why I said you can never perfect in kingship without priesthood. You cannot perfect in marriage without the correct priesthood. You cannot perfect in ministry without the correct priesthood. So, the priesthood is to bring about perfection. Because the matters of worship. So, you say... If this, there was perfection, then there was no need of bringing another priesthood. It would have stayed that priesthood in the order of Aaron, in that Levitical form of priesthood. So Aaron, or the priesthood that was with Aaron, was supposed to reign. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. So the priesthood being changed, there is also a necessity to change the law, which is the covenant. So in other words, what was wrong? He does not say it is the law which was wrong. It was the priesthood. It was the ironic priesthood which was wrong. So because now God wants to return people to the order of Melchizedek, the correct priesthood, where a person is a king and a priest. Aaron was only a priest. There's no kingship in Aaron. And God says, you are a royal what? Priesthood. So to restore things to the right order, the priesthood and to change. And when the priesthood changes, there must be a change of the law. There must be a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. So somebody comes new. Well, we are talking about somebody from the tribe of Judah. Nobody in the Judah community or the tribe has ever been having official duties on the altar. Now, for it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. So there is no priesthood in that family. Moses did not bless them even to be priests, but the Lord comes from there. The Lord comes from there. What was given to the Judah? It was kingship. But they cannot perfect in kingship without priesthood. That is why priesthood and to be given to Judah. Because they cannot perfect in kingship without priesthood. So you cannot perfect in any area of your life without priesthood. I want you to understand that. That's why people are struggling in many areas. You are struggling because you don't understand the key to success where God has given that. And it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek 
there arises another priest. Another priest rises in the, in the likelihood of Melchizedek. What is this likelihood of Melchizedek? Let us see. Yes. Who has come not according to the law of fleshly commandments, but according to the power of endless. Look at, look at that. Endless life. The power of endless life. So some priesthood, they have endless life. And they have life that ends. But there is one who has Endless life, the priesthood of Jesus Christ. That was in the form of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, a non-genealogy. He had no end, no beginning. Now look at this. For he testified, you are a priest forever, not for some time, according to the order of Melchizedek. So Levitical priesthood is not in the order of Melchizedek. It's, a, it's another form of priesthood that was not loyal, that was having an end. That is temporal priesthood. So anything aligned under a Levitical priesthood has end and it is temporary. It has end and it is temporary. But what is aligned in the order of Melchizedek priesthood has no end. It arranged because the priesthood continues. So it is the priesthood that will sustain it. If the priesthood comes to an end, everything changes. Covenant changes and whatever was brought into that covenant changes. 